is easily the most vile thing I've ever seen done to a car. Which is really ironic, because it displaces the previous most vile thing I've ever seen done to a car, and it was on the same car. I'm going to get to that in a minute. This morning, I'm, I'm going through, you know, the usual catching up on the world, and I see that I had a subscription, important word here, I had a subscription to Motor Trend, and I see a video pop up, and it's uh, on Project X. And yeah, it didn't really click what the video was about, so I just clicked on it because Project X, right? So the video was about how they're turning Project X into an EV for the SEMA show, which ironically is today, starts today. So anytime I do a video like this, I always have to do this disclaimer at the very beginning of it. Contrary to popular, popular opinion, or I'm, I'm not anti-EV, even the slightest bit. I have nothing against EVs. I'm a gearhead. I see them as just another form of motivation. It, it, it's, it, there's nothing, there's nothing uh, uh, that I find offensive about EVs. What I do find offensive is agendas. I find offensive politics being inserted into our, our world of cars. I find a lot of things offensive, but I don't find EVs offensive. And in fact, you know, two things. First is that you know, I'm a Mopar guy, right? Every Chrysler product that ever existed can trace its lineage back to an EV, the Electrobat of 1894. That was the very first Mopar. And then I looked back a few years ago when Chevrolet introduced the electric COPO. And I was like, that's interesting. You know, I didn't look at it and say, oh, that's ridiculous. Why would they do that? I said, no, I looked at it and I said, well, that's interesting. You know, that could open up a whole new dimension to drag racing. Interesting. So that said, I, I have nothing personal against EVs. So... Project X, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with Project X, Project X is something that anybody of my generation, we grew up with. Project X belonged to uh, Argus Publishing, who used to do a magazine called Popular Hot Running. And Project X originated in 1965. It was before I, I started absorbing all of this stuff, but not too far before. So Project X was intended to be the, a, a low dollar project car that anybody could follow along and learn from and duplicate and it, you know, it, was, it was a typical magazine project car and you also have to put things into perspective, it's 1965 so a 1957 car, you know, it's only 8 years old, you know, it, they picked it up off of a used car lot for 250 bucks and for the next several years, for the next well, almost 20 years they tried all different things with it. The, the car had all different incarnations. It was a gas class car, it was a, uh, uh, it was a bracket car, it was all sorts of things. And each Project X installment was loaded with tech that the average person could, could get behind, could learn from, could use, right? Actually, a lot of what I do on this channel is kind of inspired by Project X, uh, uh, the, 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 the ideology behind the Project X series and how those cars, that car was used to teach and, and, and to bring along like the next generation. So from 1965 until around 19, the late 1970s, the car went through this constant state of evolution. And it was all of these different things. Until finally it reached its pinnacle in 1980. 1980, it had, had become as much of a car as it was ever going to be. It became the definitive Project X. It's what most people think of. When they think of Project X, they picture the 1980 version. And it actually was featured in a, in a, a movie called Hollywood Nights. And the car was truly impressive. It had the right stance. It had the right look. It had the right everything. It made all of the right sounds. It had a blown, a 671 blown small block in it. The car was just righteous and perfect in every way it could possibly be. Now, as a project car, from that point on, there really wasn't much to be done with Project X. It, it had become, it had cemented itself in history. Now, mind you, this is 
over 40 years ago. This is 1980. Things may have been done to it along the lines, but they were token things. The car had its 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 you know presence intact. Then, around 2007 or 2008. Argus Publishing had been absorbed by, there was, there was that, that whole uh, consolidation of the publishing companies and, and, you know, company A bore company B, bore, and it's just, just the bigger fish eating, right? Until finally, all of the, the, the assets of Argus Publishing ended up in the hands of what is now Discovery and Motor Trend, including Hot Rod Magazine. So, Project X becomes a Hot Rod Magazine car. So sometime around 2007, 2008, they decided to bring the car out of mothballs and Chevrolet Performance, and this was the first most vile thing I've ever seen done to a car. Chevrolet Performance revamps the car. Now remember, this was a low, the, 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 the origination of this car was a low budget, every man's hot rod build, and it, and it, can, it culminated in like the ultimate incarnation of that. But Chevrolet Performance is not, you know, it should be like a pro touring car. Let's make this thing a pro touring car. So they gutted Project X and they installed an injected LS motor. The blown small block was gone. They put it on a Corvette suspension. It's high, like, you know, high and mighty gaster type of stance was gone. It was, and and they, they, they festooned the car with all sorts of, like, ornamentation, you know, just, just classless, right? And I was like, man, that is just that is just absolutely disgusting what they did to this car. I can't believe anybody could desecrate such an iconic piece of machinery this way. And then I moved on. So a couple of years ago, uh, one of the shows, I believe it was Hot Rod Garage, they're given Project X in the same form that the Chevrolet guys had. And they're like, you know, we're going to return this thing to its, its roots. We're going to make it back the way it was when it was in Hollywood Nights. So they undid like 90% of what Chevrolet had done to the car. They put a blown motor back in it. Um, you know, they got the, the, the stance back as best they could without taking the, the Corvette suspension out of it. They returned the car pretty much to the way it was in 1980, but not quite. And I was like, you know, okay, some justice has been done. This morning, all of that goes out the window. I find that Chevrolet, working with Motor Trend and Hot Rod Magazine, has decided to turn Project X into an EV, okay? They've decided to take this iconic piece of machinery, this, this iconic car, something that we all grew up with, something we all learned from, something that we all put on a pedestal, gut it, and turn it into an EV. And... The mind-blowing justification behind this is that, well, that was that was Project X's intention all along, is to try new things and new technologies and so on and so forth. No, you're absolutely wrong. Project X was never intended to do that. Project X was intended to be an every man's hot rod and something that they could attain back when it was attainable on that sort of car. When the car started life, it was an eight-year-old used car. By the time it finished its, its, its run, it was a 25-year-old or 23-year-old, whatever it was, car. It was an antique when they stopped. Forty years went by. There's nothing relevant in this car's existence to today's world of hot riding or anything like that. You can't justify desecrating this car because it's in the spirit of what the car was made to do. Wrong. The spirit of what this car was made to do was back in the day that it was done. And now it's a piece of history. And you don't do these things to history. It is... I, I, the only word I can use, the only word that I have for this is vile. I don't have words. I don't have words. That's like, I don't have words. I find this like deeply offensive, deeply troubling. Uh, if if you're a hot rodder, if you have any any sense of, of, of tradition, if you if you have any sense of of, of uh, histor historical significance, you have to find this ultimately offensive as well. Who made this decision? Who went along with this decision? Who greenlighted this thing? What were they thinking? 
it would have been far better to crush the car into a cube and say, oh no, those days are done. It's over, okay? And it, no. They turned it into a Chevy Bolt. The motor, so here's, here's what's happening, okay? Chevy is trying to market, they want to market an EV conversion kit for older cars. You know, maybe not my cup of tea. I don't think I would convert an older car to an EV, but fine. You know, there's a market for it. Do it. Sell the things. I got no problem with that. And they decided to use Project X as the vehicle to showcase this. You, you want to do it with a 57 Chevy, a Tri-5 Chevy? Fine. You can literally build an entire Tri-5 Chevy out of the aftermarket parts. Every single piece to make one of those cars is available. So build one and make an EV out of that and paint it up like Project X if you have to. Why would you take the original car, gut it, desecrate it in that way, and then put it on display? And it's on display right now at SEMA. Vile. Absolutely no excuse for this. I canceled my Motor Trend subscription. There is... I, I, I don't, I, 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 I can't, I'm not, I can't sit here and say, we need to boycott Motor Trend, right? I'm not going to do that, right? Even though we should, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, it's the step over the line. It's the slap in the face to our community, to tradition, to history, to the whole 10 yards. Absolutely wrong. Absolutely vile. That's all I've got to say about this. I'll see you tomorrow.